horizon. Basically, you look at the event horizon, which is a sphere, and you count Planck areas. This is a Planck distance on a side. And that gives, each one of them can contain a zero or a one. So, so the, one way of stating this now, and generalizing it from black holes to any physical system, there's something called the holographic principle, which says in a funny way, nature seems to be two-dimensional, even though we think it's three-dimensional, because if the total amount of information in a physical system grows as the surface area, not as the volume, in a way, everything is projected onto the surface. So this is speculative stuff at the frontiers of physics, but there is a, you know, a larger and larger body of, of physics at this moment which goes in this direction. And um, one of the, uh, Gerd uh, Tuft, uh, uh, I think, was one of the people who's promoted the holographic principle. And, and, and he is beginning to suggest, and some other physicists are starting to say, maybe the physical universe is actually discrete. And in fact, extremists would say the physical universe only has a finite number of bits. Uh, I, as a mathematician, would prefer an infinite number of bits. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, mathematical theories sort of become trivialized and incompleteness becomes obvious. But the physical universe has a right to do what it likes. So, um, so, th so there are a small group of physicists now uh, working in this direction. I mentioned Paola Zizi, uh, Seth Lloyd, uh, Tommaso Toffoli, uh, originally from Italy, obviously, but now uh, in, Bo in Boston. Um, uh, Stephen Wolfram and his big book, A New Kind of Science. I would include Ed Fredkin's website. He was one of the first people moving in this direction. Uh, uh, well, these ideas in a way are Pythagorean, <laughs> but this is a neo-Pythagoreanism in this reincarnation of these ideas. I have my own book coming out, which you can get a, a draft of on the web, and late September uh, it, uh, it will come out. Uh, Lee Smolin's book is interesting, Three Roads to Quantum Gravity. This is frontiers of physics. The stuff is more speculative than physicists want to admit. But there is increasing work on this area. So um, this was basically the, uh, so I've tried to wrap this up, as Gordana hinted. I've tried to wrap this all up in a système du monde. And my book even has stuff on uh, DNA, which I view as a, I throw it, I force it into the same, into the same paradigm. I view DNA as a computer program, and out comes an organism. Uh, this is accomplished by, uh, by women during pregnancy. Uh, uh, so I view, <laughs> you know, uh, DNA is a compression of, of the organism. And what a, what a mother does during pregnancy is to decompress this compressed information into the actual organism. So, so I view this as an instance sort of of this, of this, of this model. Uh, now, I, as I discuss in my book, the, the, you know, the model is an oversimplification, but it's, you know, this is an attempt, what one does when one has a système du monde is attempt to force everything into this, right? If you have rose-colored glasses, the whole world will look rose, right? So, um, um, the idea was to have questions or comments, right? I think there are 10 minutes left, so I, maybe I should stop at this point. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about these crazy ideas and we open the floor to criticisms or questions or whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much for this excellent talk, Professor. Uh, now the question, questions. Shall we start here? It's also okay to say you disagree, it's all nonsense, right? That's in the philosophical tradition. Thank you. My name is Søren Bria. I'm from Denmark. I wonder about your criterion of understandability. I mean, if this is to make a computer program, does it mean that the computers are the final creatures for understanding? And how does that contrast the human idea of understanding and where does meaning enter into it? Well. When I mention a computer, it may sound very strange, but I'm just saying what a, the traditional thing that a scientific theory buys you, as Mach says and a lot of other people say, it organizes a large body of data and um, it, 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 it shows that the same idea that explains something also explains other situations and other situations. So you get more out than you put in. You, know, uh, you don't want to have a new theory every time you do a new experiment. The point of a theory is that at some point the theory stops getting more complicated and it still continues to work. So, so, 
So that's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know, the, the computer is just, is not really necessary here. You could be doing the calculations by hand. It's the idea that a theory enables you to calculate uh, how the world works or to make predictions. That's really, and I'm just using the computer as a, as a way to be a little more precise there. But you could put the human mind there if you want. If for the Leibnizian model, what you would have would be a uh, mind of God here. You know, you have ideas coming in, you have the mind of God, and you have the whole universe coming out. And Leibniz says you maximize this and you minimize that. And this is one of the senses in which Leibniz says this is the best of all possible worlds. Which, of course, Voltaire mocked, mocked without understanding. So I'm trying to rescue Leibniz's best of all possible worlds in the technical inf sense of information theory. You know, I'm trying to be able to say more precisely what in the dis uh, discourse on metaphysics, what Leibniz meant when he said it was the best of all possible worlds, in that the ideas are very simple and the universe is very diverse and rich. And I'm trying to numerically quantify that and I'm using the size of computer programs as a way to do it to make the ideas more precise because Hermann Weyl said these ideas are very important but they're imprecise, he said in 1932. So putting the computer in, which is Turing's contribution, helps to make these ideas more precise so you can have a mathematical theory about them. But you don't need a physical machine. You can say a computer is a human being doing calculations, if you like. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I'm uh, Paavo Pilkkanen, and uh, I'm sort of interested in the role of quantum mechanics in, in these issues. And actually did some proposal recently with Paola Zitsis. Ah. So there's, it's a small world. I, I think yes. you were just visiting her, right? Recently, yes, I, okay. yes, I was in uh, Padua recently. Okay, but anyway, so I was wondering about the uh, role of creativity in in your system because there was the sort of ontology that was advocated is that like we compute the state of the universe from the previous state, and of course that all sounds very kind of deterministic. And uh, now, of course, some of physics is very deterministic, but some of it doesn't seem to be so. So if we go look at things like the vacuum state or vacuum oscillations or inequivalent vacuum states, I mean, it, I'm just wondering whether actually physics would allow us to have a very kind of deterministic picture that we, we could actually have this kind of computation yeah, yeah. and a future determined perhaps in, in that kind of a way. And a connected question, how does creativity come into your ontology? Okay, well, I love creativity. Uh, one of the things I'm arguing in my book with examples is that math does not progress by mechanically deducing consequences of a fixed set of axioms, because that was the previous paradigm. The, what I give examples to show is that math progresses with new concepts, which completely change the viewpoint. And I give a, a number of examples. The notion of uncomputability is one such concept, or the notion of program size complexity is another. And I go through some historical examples. So I think Poincaré was right and Hilbert was wrong. You know, the essence of mathematics is its creativity, and what you really want are new concepts, not just longer and longer proofs. Because a new concept changes the viewpoint and may make something that look complicated simple. And I discuss how you can prove that numbers are transcendental in my book, which has an interesting intellectual history. It's, I, history of ideas is very interesting. So I like creativity. Now, the question of whether the physical universe is deterministic or quantum mechanical is an embarrassment for this viewpoint, uh, which I should confess immediately. This viewpoint works much better if, you, uh, if, the, if the world were deterministic. And if you look, for example, at Stephen Wolfram's book, you know, because contingent facts from a rational point of view are a nuisance. Because if the world, if, 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 the, if everything in the world, if everything in the world happened for a reason, there would be no randomness. There would be no quantum mechanical randomness. There would be no contingent facts, right? A rational mind wants to understand everything and a result of a 